So for the Calculus 2 class, um, this is 9.5. These are the problems. Uh, you can pick five, and uh, I'll ask you to uh, show me uh, one of them, possibly. Um, what this uh, section is about, 9.5, is the alternating series test, OK? Now, you know, this is what an alternating series looks like. It has this negative 1 to the n in it, or something equivalent to that, all right? Um, sometimes a, a series is alternating. It doesn't actually have this. But if you write it out, you'll see that if you write out the first few terms, you'll see that what positive and negative is positive and negative is like a pattern. So uh, it's an alternating uh, series. Now, these can be difficult with some of the other tests. So um, one real nice thing about the, these alternating series is that there is a test specifically for them. Okay, So this is given that the, the terms of the sequence are positive. Okay. The limit has to be zero, okay, in order for this thing to converge, which limit has to be zero for any uh, series in order for it to converge. If it's not zero, then it diverges by the nth term test. And this uh, sequence has to be decreasing, okay? So it has to be decreasing for all of them. <coughs> so as long as you can show these two things, which are usually fairly straightforward, uh, that means that this thing converges, okay? Now, one way of getting rid of this thing is to take the absolute value of the sequence, right? So with this absolute value on here, okay, uh, we have this idea that if this series converges, okay, in other words, when, when the absolute value is on the, 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 the sequence and the series converges, that means that the, the, the series without the absolute value is going to converge, okay? This is called absolute convergence, all right? So absolute value converging drives this theorem. Now, um, if this thing diverges, okay, uh, and without the absolute value it converges, okay, that's conditional convergence. convergence. Of course, if they both diverge, then it's just a divergent series. All right. So maybe we can pick uh, a couple of problems. We have a little bit of time here, and uh, and we can try a couple of them. Hmm? Um, Here's one. Uh, let's try this. This is uh, number 23. Okay. And it is negative 1 to the n over n factorial. Okay. So we need to show uh, this limit. Okay. So we have the limit as n approaches infinity. Now notice that the negative 1 to the n is gone, right? This is just n. So in other words, this can be written like this. So this is the sequence, right? So that's all we really care about, okay? And then we have 1 over n factorial. This obviously increases very, very fast, so this goes to 0. So it passes the first requirement. And then is it decreasing? Well, yes, the n factorial is increasing very, very quickly. So 1 over n factorial is definitely decreasing, okay? You can just say 1 over n plus 1 is strictly less than 1 over n. Now, um, of course, uh, to be really rigorous, you would have to write a proof of that. Uh, this thing is obvious. Okay? So uh, there's an example. And if you take the absolute value of this thing, right, you would get Okay, which is uh, this. Okay. And uh, we can show that uh, 1 over n factorial is going to be less than uh, 1 over n squared, for example, uh, for, for any n. So, uh, so you could use the, uh, the comparison test to determine that this thing is convergent. Okay. Um, so if you have any questions about this, uh, send me an email. And when we're done with 9.5, then we have some problems in 9.6. And then when we're done with those, uh, you can try that challenge um, of memorizing the table and then trying to do all those problems in 9.6.